If you love small form factor computers powered by AMD processors, Miniform is back at it again with a new Ryzen powered mini PC to sink your teeth into. This can be seen as a successor to their first Ryzen based system from last summer, and they've made a lot of great improvements this time around. How's it going everyone, Taki here. Today we're gonna to take a look at the new HM50. We're gonna do a very quick unboxing of this product. Inside the box, you get a 65 watt hour charger with a type C connector, a short HDMI cable, and mounting brackets. I reviewed the DMAT5 PC from this company last summer, and I was really blown away with the performance that they were able to pack inside this tiny box. This new model is slightly larger than the older one, but it comes with more ports and better industrial design. The HM50 comes with the Ryzen 5 4500U CPU with a boost clock speed of 4 GHz, a Radeon GPU with a max clock speed of 1500 MHz, 16 GB of DDR4 RAM, a 256 GB M.2 SSD, and Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 for connectivity. On the front of the HM50, you have an onboard microphone, a power button, a microphone and a headphone jack, two USB 3.1 ports, and a Type-C port that supports 4K 60Hz video output. Cooling plays a huge part in what makes this product great, and you can already get a good idea for how cold this device must run with this large vent on the side. On the back, we have four USB 3.0 ports, two LAN ports, one display port, an HDMI port, a Kensington lock to protect your tiny PC from being stolen, and a power input. And just like the left side, the right side has another huge air vent. Keeping with this theme, we also have two air vents on the bottom, and the entire top panel has a tiny gap around the rim for airflow. You're going to see it later, but this PC runs exceptionally cold, and it's easy to see that a lot of thought went into this design, especially when compared to the older model from last year. I've been using this bad boy for a few days now, and I really can't wait to see their cooling solution. You can see that dual channel RAM is finally a stock option for this Ryzen system, and this is going to ensure that we're going to get the best gaming performance possible. There's also storage space for two additional hard drives that you can install in this bottom panel, and this is an upgrade that I'm going to be doing on my own device after this review, but for now I'm just going to be using the included SSD that's hidden under this heat spreader. Here's the inside view of the top half with those air cutaway vents that I was talking about, and this should give you a good idea of what's coming up next. Take a look at this absolute unit of a fan. I have to tell you that this device is running at 15 watt TDP, and being that it's a laptop chip, it wasn't designed to be paired with a fan this huge, but I love it. This is a huge blower fan that typically runs around 800 RPM, and it is whisper quiet. It's really the first thing that I noticed while daily driving this mini PC for the last week, and I'll have a mic'd up recording of how this sounds under full load later in the video. And just for those that are wondering, here's the SSD and RAM components that this comes with. Now I already mentioned that I've been daily driving this for the last week, and the biggest thing that I've done on this so far was produce the last video that I just put out on my channel about setting up emulators on your Android phone. But I also produced the entire video that you're watching right now on the device itself, and it performs very well at being a video editing machine. It can surprisingly scrub a 4K timeline very well, and it manages to capture audio while doing full playback without the fans getting loud. This isn't a new chip, so I don't want to spend too long on synthetic benchmarks, but I do want to just show off the jump in performance that we get in Geekbench 5 when compared against the popular DMAF 5 model from last year. While the systems are relatively close to each other, you can see this difference in performance in emulation, especially when we go to the high end. The 4500U is actually a chip that I've tested to death, but I've never used it in any other device besides the Aya Neo, so I was looking forward to seeing how a change in form factor could affect how I feel about this chip. I don't think every mini PC needs to be good at emulation to be worth buying, but this definitely has enough power to be more than just a media box. In this section, we're going to run through the gamut of what this PC can emulate. A couple of things that I want to point out to you before we get started. I have performance metrics on screen throughout almost all of this section, and I want to point out a few things to you. First, you can always see the CPU and GPU temperature along with their frequencies, but I've also enabled a sensor that shows how close I am to the TDP limit of the system, and I pretty much keep under that 15 watt limit until we get to the later part of this video. I've also listed the CPU fan speed on the bottom, and I'll be giving you a sound recording of the average speed from the HM50 later on in this video. The first system that we're going to take a look at is PS1 using the Duck Station Core, and I've bumped the internal resolution up to 1080p with the widescreen hack and a few other options to improve the 3D world. It's really amazing how these old PS1 titles look these days. It's kind of funny, but this is exactly how the game looked to me when I played it on release, and I don't know if any of you feel the same way when you look at these upscaled retro games. Next up, we have Dreamcast using the Flycast Core at 1080p with the widescreen hack enabled.
Let's move over to PSP running at 4x native resolution. You're going to see it in a second, but it's really amazing how these upscaled PSP games can beat out the image quality that you can get from a PS2 title on these integrated GPUs. Here's PS2 running at 2x native resolution. I probably could have gone higher than this, but most PS2 titles won't run well at 3x resolution at 15 watt TDP. Ah, the breeze feels great. Moving on over to GameCube and Wii, we have the internal resolution set to 1080p with the widescreen hack enabled. This is a known issue, but 3DS doesn't run well on AMD right now unless you run it in Linux where the drivers are better, so while it's technically possible, I wouldn't bother trying to play 3DS games on this board. CMU on the other hand does very well on AMD, and this is Breath of the Wild running at 900p, but I've had to bump up the TDP to get better performance at this resolution. You can see that the game is compiling shaders on the fly, and it is extremely smooth. PS3 isn't that great on the 4500U and it really does require a higher TDP to get some games to be playable, but as you can see from this example, it does do a decent job. That leaves us with the final system in this test, which is Switch. Again, this system requires a high TDP, so I've had to bump it up past 15 watt for some of the games in this section. Even with this increase in power, the system does do a good job of keeping things cool.
That leaves us with PC gaming, and I've already done a lot of dedicated videos on this chip with the INEO, so I'll just link to a playlist down below if you want to see more of what this PC can do. They say the Elder Crossings happen once every 10 years, right? We can't really call our investigation complete if we don't stick around to see for ourselves. Pretty sure the First Fleet has the same idea. Anyhow, I got a date. He is Miss D. You don't say. She's so sweet. More survivors. We've got to get that train moving. As promised, here's how the fan sounds under the average load that you saw from the test that I just did. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please remember to leave a like down below. This is my third PC from this company, and it isn't even close to being the most powerful, but it is the one that I like the most. The only downside with this is that there's no bare bones option, so it is kind of pricey for a mini computer since you're paying for the RAM and SSD. If you have any questions about this that I didn't address, feel free to leave those down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Happy gaming, everyone! Taki out.